Hello brain lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy. Now for those of you who saw my TED talk and followed my course on the neurogenesis, you know already there are five pillars to a healthy brain. Well, turns out there's a sixth one. L-M-N-O-P. That's all you need to know to keep your brain in shape. L-M-N-O-P. L stands for love and social connection. M for movement and exercise. N for novelty and going out of your comfort zone. O for omega-3 and a healthy diet. And P finally for pauses and sleep. There's a mountain of fascinating studies and research behind this and tons of ways to apply this in your own life. At the Brain Academy, that's what we do. We keep it real and see how we can translate science into advice for your everyday life. So LMNOP, five pillars to a healthy brain. But there's a sixth one. It's actually L-M-N-N-O-P. There's another N right in the middle there. And that N stands for nature. I want to explore nature. I want to get back to my roots. Roots? Since I first became aware of the sixth pillar a couple of years ago, I started keeping track of all the studies that came out regarding it. Well, I always keep track of things. I'm actually working on many projects at the same time and uh, I collect information on the things that are of interest to me. And once I reach a certain threshold, I turn it into a new course or an update of an existing course. Or sometimes it becomes the subject of a vlog episode. Anyway, so nature as a way to keep our brain healthy. There's an increasing body of evidence to support this and most of the studies so far have focused on green stuff. Like living near a forest will keep your amygdala healthier. The amygdala being the center for fear and aggression. Well, actually just having trees in your street would already help. One of my favorite ones is how having trees on the side of a road will lower traffic aggression. I kid you not. I love it how simple things like that can make a difference. We believe we're so in control of our own behavior when in fact it's really so easy to influence us, to get us to do or not certain things. Our reaction to our direct environment on a non-conscious level is one of the main drivers of our behavior. It influences us on so many levels and one of them is obviously our brain health. Now the studies I'm talking about have always been centered around forests and trees. I remember reading about these studies for the first time and wondering, hmm, what if you live in a desert or close to one? Or in Iceland, where there are hardly any trees. Nature is still amazing. It's a different kind of amazing, but amazing nevertheless. No studies about that. Well, my guts tell me it works the same way, but I have no data to prove it. Until now, kinda. I wanted to share with you this string of studies I bumped into that talk about the effect of water on our mental health. No, I'm not talking about the drinking kind of water. More the swimming kind or the amazing to watch type. You know, seas, lakes, rivers, stuff like that. Now, I grew up at the seaside. So this kind of research has a special meaning to me. And don't get too excited, growing up at the seaside is way less glamorous than it sounds when the sea in question is called the North Sea. Or as my wife said the first time I brought her to the beach, where are the palm trees? Nope, the North Sea is a different kind of beautiful. Anyway, the research is really cool. Turns out people living near water have a lower risk of premature death, a lower risk of obesity, and generally speaking, they report better mental health and well-being. Okay, nice, right? But it doesn't stop there. The water, let's call it blue space. Well, blue space turns out lowers stress levels and anxiety. That's probably also linked to the fact that we seem to exercise more to increase our physical activity levels when living close to water. The general conclusion is that blue space boosts people's mood and psychological well-being. There are many health benefits from living near water. As I said, I grew up at the seaside. I remember as a student, after an exam, I would take a walk, just my feet in the water. And that was my go-to stress relief strategy. As a kid, I couldn't conceptualize not living at the sea. To me, I didn't understand what all those kids would do, especially during the summer months, right? It was a complete mystery to me. The sea will always resonate with me, and now I even have science to back that up. And still today, you see, I have these discussions with my wife where I try to convince her to go and live near the seaside. 
Hmm, palm trees. I need to find palm trees. So what about you? Do you feel the effects of blue space on your psychological well-being? Leave your experience in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. But if you want the real stuff, you go to brainacademy.com and join our 350,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen your mind.